Hey filmmakers, today we're talking about shooting with anamorphic lenses on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. So I rented the Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses. We were shooting an ad for a brand new app coming out. Now when Atlas Lens Co. came out with these lenses, it was groundbreaking because they're the most affordable anamorphic cinema lenses on the market. Now affordable of course is up to you and your budget and your production. Now each of these lenses is about $8,000 a piece. So the set right here, $24,000 before taxes. Now. That's affordable for a lot of larger scale productions that want to shoot anamorphic all the time, not affordable for most videographers and people in the industry like myself. And even renting them was pretty expensive and getting insurance for them to cover them every single day of your production. These lenses are pretty heavy. They're about five pounds a piece. And so I got a lens support underneath there to prop it up and keep the pressure off of the actual lens mount. Now, the great thing about these lenses is that they fit perfectly into my matte box. So I've got the Swingway matte box and you can see here, there's the lens in all of its glory and its beauty. And when you swing this around, it fits perfectly and snugly right around the lens. Now you probably can't see it because I've got the ND filter dropped in. I'll pull that out and you can see better what it looks like. It has a very nice, tight, perfect seal on the matte box around the lens. So no light leaks or anything like that are getting into this lens, unless you want them to. And when you're shooting with anamorphics, you want lens flaring because it is gorgeous. Now with the Atlas anamorphic lenses, they are known for their blue lens flares. It's absolutely iconic. And you can actually see when you're looking directly into the lens, you can see that there's kind of some blue glass in there and that's what heavily contributes to that blue lens flare. So these lenses definitely flare when you get a direct hard light source into them. When you don't have a direct hard light source into them, I actually found that they really didn't flare up. Now let's talk about the actual build quality of these lenses. So being an $8,000 lens, you'd expect it to have a really great build quality and it does. It's a full metal construction, very impressive. The focus ring on it is actually extremely light and smooth. I mean, it is just so smooth and the focus throw on it is massive spins forever. I was actually kind of worried that I wouldn't be able to use my follow focus with this because I'm using the Tilta Nucleus Nano, which you can see is pretty small. The motor's not very big. So I was worried that it wasn't going to be powerful enough to turn the focus ring on the lenses because they're just so big. Just smoothly turns and it can turn really fast. or get really tiny smooth movements. It just, it's impressive. And the Nucleus Nano handles the focus ring on this perfectly. Now let's take a look at the T-stop ring on this. So it is actually very smooth and solid as well. No issue changing the aperture, it's perfect. So something to know about shooting with these lenses is that they let in a ton of light. You know, they get down to T2, which is fantastic, gives you really good shallow depth of field, you know, a nice blurred out background. But at T2 and T2.8, it can be pretty soft. So if your subject is moving in and out a lot or moving around a lot, you're gonna struggle to keep them really sharp and pristine and in focus. I found a lot of times that I would actually shoot at T4 because it was definitely where the lens was the sharpest, but you could still get a nice blurred out background even at T4. I was hoping that I could mount this camera and these lenses onto a gimbal, like my Feiyotech AK4000, but yeah, nope, they're way too heavy way too big. I was totally wrong. Even thinking for a second that that would be possible. I was like, if I get it back far enough, I can get it balanced. It'll be fine. No, I didn't even try. Once I got the lens up, I was like, yep, nope. These are not going to balance. That's one thing to keep in mind. If you're going to use these lenses, you're probably not going to be able to use your gimbal. If you're using like the Ronin S, the Zion Crane, 
the Feotech, any of those gimbals, none of those will handle this camera and one of these massive lenses. You're absolutely gonna have to rent something like the Movi Pro. Another thing to keep in mind when you're using anamorphic lenses with the Pocket 6K is that there is no built-in ND filter in the 6K. And if you wanna shoot wide open and get that nice shallow depth of field, you absolutely have to have ND. But again, it's not built in, so you gotta use some ND filters on the front. And because this is a 100 millimeter front lens element, the chances are you're gonna have difficulty finding a screw on one. So you have to use drop in four x four filters. The great thing about these lenses is that you can actually get them in Canon EF mount. So they have an interchangeable mount for PL or Canon EF. And of course the Pocket 6K is a Canon EF mount. Now I actually found that the 32 millimeter I think was by far my favorite lens to use because this sensor is an APS-C crop sensor. So that Super 35 sensor is just smaller. You're gonna be more zoomed in already when you throw on one of these lenses. So I found that using the 80 millimeter was just really not doable for the stuff that I was doing at least. The 50 millimeter was definitely my second favorite. You know, it's the classic nifty 50. It gave you a really nice shallow depth of field, good you know, shape on the face, not too much distortion or anything like that. I mean, anamorphic lenses are already known for the distortion, especially around the edges. Let's talk about actually using anamorphic mode on the Pocket 6K. It's extremely easy to do and there's really only one mode. So you go into the menu, you tap on record, and then you just tap on 3.7K anamorphic. That's it, you're done. And the camera is ready to shoot anamorphic. So when you're filming on the back LCD, you can actually see what it's gonna look like de-squeezed, which is amazing because it does the de-squeezing preview for you in camera. So if you wanna use an external monitor that's brighter or bigger, like a seven inch, you can definitely do that and it puts out a nice de-squeezed image already. So you don't have to do any de-squeezing on your other monitor. Now, of course the actual raw image is saved in that square aspect ratio and you have to de-squeeze it in your editor. One thing to keep in mind if you're gonna shoot anamorphic mode on the 6K is the only way to shoot it is in B-RAW. So if you don't use DaVinci Resolve or you don't wanna edit in DaVinci Resolve, it may not be the best camera for you to use. You may wanna use a RED camera where you can use RED Code RAW in Final Cut Pro or Premiere. But for me, I've had to learn DaVinci Resolve because I really wanted to use this camera and I'm actually forced to shoot everything in B-RAW. I can't use ProRes and shoot anamorphic mode. You have to use B-RAW for anamorphic mode. So what I've actually done is imported all the footage into DaVinci Resolve, de-squeezed it, I can adjust all the raw settings, and then I'm actually exporting all of it as ProRes files and then editing it in Final Cut Pro 10 because I can edit the absolute fastest in that program. The nice thing about anamorphic mode on this is of course you can shoot in your standard 24 frames per second, but you can also shoot in 50 frames per second, which is beautiful because you can get slow motion anamorphic mode in black magic raw i mean this is this is the mecca of of what people have been asking for raw anamorphic slow motion right here oh i love it i'm getting excited and i'm freaking out about it because it was just amazing shooting with this and it's so quick and fast to get into that slow motion mode on this you just hit the h f R button, high frame rate on the side, and boom, you're right in slow motion mode. Honestly, the image that I've been able to get out of the Pocket 6K paired up with the Atlas Anamorphics is absolutely astounding. It looks like it's coming out of a RED camera, but this is a fraction of the price. The 6K, 2,500 bucks. Now, of course, the lenses are $8,000, but even that together, that's 10,500. That's still less than the price of a brand new RED camera. It's a fraction of the price. So the fact that Blackmagic has pulled that off and that Atlas Lensco has pulled that off and you pair them together, I'm telling you, this is a absolutely magical beast. I mean, if I could shoot everything on this every single day, I would because the image that you get out of this is just, it's amazing. If you wanna see more things about these lenses, shooting anamorphic, the 6K, 
all that stuff. There's so much more coming on this channel. So hit subscribe right now and smash the like button if you like this. Tell your friends and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.